All right, so welcome aboard. You all came into the um, room muted. So please, if you, um, you can either unmute yourself to make comments and go back on mute, or you can unmute yourself to just carry on with conversation. Um, but I hope that we will have a good conversation today. It'll be the first time we've had pretty much the entire crew online. So would somebody please um, put in the chat window if you are able to hear me since everybody is muted. Thanks, Kyle. I appreciate that. All righty. Well, I've got some agenda items today. Some of them came to me from Justin Stewart at University of North Texas. If you guys have other things that you want to talk about, please jump right in. Um, yeah, this group, we don't have to sit on formalities or anything. Um, so the agenda items that we have had suggested are drones and their uses and limitations on campuses uh, in dealing with risk safety, continuity, and so on. For things like building inspections, crowd to safety, surveillance, security type stuff. So we can talk about that. We've got camp campus-wide essential functions and business process analyses. Um, Justin had asked about satellite and remote campuses versus your main campus. Should your coop plans be, should the satellite campus be tied into your main plan or should they have their own completely separate plan? And then the possibility of forming a Google group or using some other program to have a group chat area where you guys could all get in, post questions and answers, post resources, share documents, and so on. So of those four things, or if you have anything else you'd like to throw out there, what sounds like you'd like to talk first? Yeah, hey Shelly, can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Am I super loud probably? No, actually I just need to turn my volume up on you just a little bit. Go ahead. So this is Justin at UNT. Good morning everyone. Good morning Shelly. Um, yeah, so again, I just, that was just kind of some thoughts off the top of my head um, as I continue to um, uh, always be digging deeper, I guess, into coop planning. Um, I just wanted to bring up that first one I think that Shelly mentioned as far as your essential functions um, on a campus level. Um, and then also Shelly get some, I guess, feedback or maybe even buy-in from you as far as kind of what that business process analysis looks like. From your vantage point, uh, needs for the COOP plan um, on, a, on a campus level uh, essential, essential function. Of course, and let me kind of back up real quick. Uh, in the way previously that our COOP plan has kind of been drafted out, we've left kind of the essential functions up to almost on the department level. Um, <clears throat> and then, um, you know, kind of working around a BPA on the on the department level, but on the uh, kind of overall overarching framework plan on a university level, of course, there's there's going to be those, you know, those those standard essential functions as far as communication, continuing education, um, you know, uh, making sure that you have a face or a voice for the university, you know, different things like that is kind of what I'm what I'm getting at, and then what would kind of a BPA look like. Uh, on that level, if that is actually kind of what we're seeking or what we're going after. So I'll end it right there and open it up, I guess. Okay. I don't know how many of you even have microphones with the ability to talk, but I'd love to hear more from you. <laughs> or if you want to Type in any responses. So, um, I, I know that some of you, I'm just, I'm just gonna jump in here since nobody is. Um, I know that there are several of you that you have maybe a system plan with just your only essential functions or things about keeping that system level, that really high level of management going, 
you have campus plans dealing with keeping just the high level of campus going, and then you break down into every division, every college, and so on with their separate plans. And, and typically, from what I've heard from most of you, that main system or campus plan is used as the template to help the other, you know, each of your divisions and colleges and so on develop their own plan. Um, but I think any, no matter what, if you're looking at an essential function, just how to keep your chancellor and your various people going, you know, there are essential functions for those guys. And you still need to run everything through that business process analysis. And that really, to me, what I, I know we all use business process analysis a little differently. Um, the term business impact analysis, business process analysis, threat management, and so on, they, a lot of times they have cross purposes when you talk to different groups. The way it's used with COOP is taking a look at each of your essential functions and trying to analyze everything you need just to keep that one function going. So your manpower, your supplies and equipment, your communications, your connectivity, um, how many chairs you need at your continuity facility or at home or whatever. Um, and that gives you the raw data that if you sum each of your essential functions up, I mean, if you're an, if, if you were in a single facility, if you summed all those up, you'd probably all be moving to one alternate facility and that would tell you what you needed to find as a resource there. Um, you may have each of your divisions may be planning to bug out to a different location. So there might be differences there. Um, but, and, and even if you have a main campus plan and you say here, use this plan and modify it to fit your division or your college, there's still going to be things that have to change based on that. Um, you know, what types of functions they have. Do they need classroom space? Do they need lab space? Do they need, you know, if it's your housekeeping, um, how, do they even need to be doing anything if, if all the buildings are evacuated? Um, it looks like I just got an email. It looks like we're having some people who are having issues logging into the meeting. So give me just a sec. I'm going to go back and look up the connection here so that I can send them that link. Um, these always end up so much trickier than I expect them to be. All right, I've got the link. Let me send that out to the person who just emailed me. There, thank you for your patience. Um, difficult part is the typical, what I want to do is sit there and pay, paste into the chat and then I'm realizing everybody that would see it there is already in the meeting, so that's kind of silly. But So Justin, does that cover the general gist of what you're talking about or are there some fine points that need to be gone over more depth? And if, like I said, if any of you have a microphone either in your laptop or a separate microphone, I encourage you to jump on and be able to talk because you don't want to hear me talk for a whole hour and a half. So, no, yeah, Shelly, I think that that covers the gist of it, and I and I and I get that again. I was just kind of wanting to spark, I guess, or stoke some conversation in regards to uh, number one, uh, kind of campus-wide essential functions, and of course, those are going to differ a little bit on a department or on a college or on a school level, right? Because the overarching kind of framework plan for the university are gonna be very broad, um, you know, functions that, that just need to be maintained, right? Whether that's police services, facility services, you know, different things right. like that. And of course, once you get down on the department level, you're gonna start looking at, you know, the, the business process analysis of, you know, maintaining um, you know, classwork or classroom work or even, um, you know, continuing education, I guess, for students, even if that's remotely online, a different facility, a different location, uh, what have you. So, 
I think it's a little bit more challenging, I guess I could say, to develop out those those BPAs um, on a, a more of an institution-wide level, such as maintain critical communication to uh, the community and the constituents of the university, right? Of course, that's going to fall under your communications division, social media aspects, which will also tie into your communications department uh, continuity plan. So I, I see it as kind of being done almost a couple of times, I guess, uh, per se. But anyway, that's that's kind of what I was leaning at. Number one, your your critical or essential functions on a university level, and maybe even then how they differ on more of a department level, college or school level. So yeah. Not to open up too big of a can of worms, I guess. Well, no, I think you've got a very valid point there because <coughs> you guys have so many layers compared to your average state agency. And so as you're talking, Justin, I'm thinking if you're starting with like, okay, we're going to develop a system-wide plan and then we're going to try to use that to make it simpler to develop all of these other plans. I also think you could work that in reverse. Like you said, if for the campus wide things, um, you'd have police department, maybe housing office. I don't know what all you'd have, but um, you, you get them to come together Anybody you think would affect that whole campus wide thing. And I mean, it, I know eventually it ends up back down into every department and so on, but at least to say, how are we controlling the campus and how are we making sure that building maintenance is staying up to par and so on that um, get them before or after they complete their plan, maybe get them to help you by coming together as a committee and saying, how would they do that? Yeah, I 100% agree, and that's currently, I've just drafted out my COOP core team for the campus. Of course, that includes individuals who represent or have um, some ties to, you know, what you, what, what you were just talking about, those critical or essential functions on a campus-wide level. So, facilities has representation, police department, auxiliary services, which includes housing and dining services, right? Uh, our space management people, you know, have a have a seat at that table as well. So, and again, I took, uh, of course, a lot of that stuff thanks to um, Ginger at U of H. So, but anyhow, just wanted to shout out. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, I agree, Shelly, and that's that's next steps is to bring uh, those big, um, I guess those big owners, if you will, to the table together. So yeah, okay. cool. And again, I, several of you have been in almost every meeting we've had so far, which is fantastic. If you haven't been, that's totally fine. Hope you'll come back with us again. But one thing that this group has been really, really good about is when somebody has a question and somebody else has a document or a policy or a plan in place for it, is sharing what they can of those templates and talking to each other and helping each other out and i know you know ginger macy justin patrice kyle you guys have all you know just and i'm not meaning to miss anybody if i am but i know you guys have shared some things back and forth with each other that kind of help is huge because if somebody's already solved a problem similar to yours why start from scratch so any other questions or comments um that uh, you know Macy she said yes Justin that she heard you just fine um, so anything else that you guys want to either type into chat or um, put over your microphone to can come right here. Um, yeah no that's fine to uh, comment on essential functions that like those campus-wide really broad sector essential functions or doing business process analyses on those and you'll see another head scooting into the frame here. This is my new cohort, cohort Frank. Hello. So, um. Um, hi, this is Monica Martinez with Texas A&M University. Yes, Monica. College Station. And so just to kind of add a little bit to the conversation, um, the way we've kind of addressed that issue in our plans is we've kind of created this, I don't want to say a category, but basically, uh, 
identified some broad operations that have university-wide implications to include emergency response services, utilities, communications, IT, hazard materi hazardous materials response. And so those are kind of those top tier groups um, that we have focused our first um, round of, you know, departmental level plans. And so that's kind of what, you know, because we are such a huge entity as far as so many different levels, like you mentioned earlier, there's not really a way to just push this out to the entire campus at the same time. So you kind of have to do it in a tiered approach. Um, and so that is what we've identified in our university level plan as being um, kind of those essential, that top level tier critical infrastructure, you know, essential functions for the university. Well, and that kind of stuff's really helpful too, because you mentioned several things there that, um, you know, it would be easy to forget some of those. Um, you know, you've got your, if you've got your own power plant and you've got your own, all these things, you really need to be able to um, remember what all to include. So you guys are more help to each other on that than I am to you guys, because I don't deal with that stuff all the time. So. But and then what we did though is again and the university level plan it's really that framework that you talked about for the departments so that when we do go to utilities and energy services they know the type of information we need to collect from them and it's a standardized for all of the departments that we collect the information from um, so as we pass that up the chain to our continuity and recovery group which is comprised of our president provost and all many of our VPs, then they can make decisions, but look at these plans in a standardized format. That's great. So um, if, if any of you have questions about how Monica does that, Monica, are you okay with them emailing you? Um, sure, actually we have our business continuity manager, Jonathan Soriano is on the call as well. And so they can either email me and I can send those to John or um, they can email John directly. Okay, so my recommendation is to email John directly just so that Monica doesn't have to act as relay. But either way, just if you have questions, it sounds like you guys have a really organized system in place. Um, and, you know, and another thing is if you guys are interested, uh, and just so you know, Jonathan just put his email address down at the bottom, so now you've got it. Um, if you guys are interested, let me know when I send out a call for agenda items, because I could have Jonathan and or Monica present at some point and maybe share some of those documents with you in a meeting. So that's a possibility too. And, and I will say as a disclaimer, you know, we still are struggling with the same things that I think everybody probably on this call is struggling with as far as, you know, how to engage academics um, or the academic colleges and things like that. So we definitely do not have all the answers. Um, and we still, um, you know, are trying to build up our program thanks to many of the resources that uh, the people on this call have shared with us. Um, yeah. But, but again, so, you know, we're happy to share anything we have, but we're also looking for um, best practices and things that work at other institutions that we can apply here. Sounds good. So if any of you have things that might help Monica and her group, you know, there again, just keep sharing. That's this group is there for, and you guys have been really, really good at that so far. So, all right, well, let's move on then from essential functions and business process analysis. Hey, Shelly. Oh, yes, sir. Hey, let me jump in real quick. Um, Justin, May, um, Jonathan, and Monica, that was good info, but I just had a small win with my provost office, who is over all of our colleges and schools. Um, the last week of September, they were finally able to send out kind of my, um, my, uh, my requirement letter requiring all colleges and schools to uh, participate in COOP planning on a college or school department level. So um, I kind of have that that foundation of a letter that I could send out to, to if anybody uh, kind of kind of re uh, requests it, I can I can do that, of course, and you can use it uh, or trash it, whatever it doesn't matter. But uh, it's a way that it was a, it was a way that I was able to um, kind of get out in front of some departments that I sometimes have trouble getting out in front of uh, without having a policy to kind of back me up for coop planning. So yeah, so that's that. It gives you a little um, teeth to that requirement. Go ahead, Monica. So Justin, that's actually pretty awesome. We definitely need a copy of that letter. And I actually have a meeting scheduled in just two weeks with um, kind of the 
right hand man to the provost, if you will, so that we can start that conversation because we definitely realize we need that buy in from the provost that, you know, unfunded mandate, whatever you want to call it, that says, yes, you guys need to do this process, because if not, it's just us going to people and saying, hey, we need you to do this. But uh, yeah, there's not really a requirement that says you have to. Yeah, 100%. Same thing here. No requirement per se, except from the state level, which I actually um, uh, notate in that kind of chain or form letter that I've drafted out. Uh, and yeah, again, I think that's a good move is, is obviously having that come from uh the those faculty and colleges and schools uh and departments uh big boss is always a, a good move as we all know so yeah absolutely i'll, I'll send that over uh, monica i'll send that over to jonathan that way um that y'all can have it so yeah just Sounds great thank this you. a copy too just in case we have people that aren't online and maybe we can they yeah. request it later on we can have a copy that'd be great justin if you send it to frank or i at sorm too um you know, just peel yeah, out anything. I'll just shoot it over to the front. That'd be awesome. Thank yeah. you. Because we will share this video with people afterwards, and some of them may say, wait, I want that, I want that. So, you know, as long as we know where things came from, if nothing else, we know to hook them up with Monica or Jonathan or Justin or whomever. Um, and I'm really glad. Yeah, you got you it. I'm sure. sure. I, I highly recommend written policies or regulations or whatever at the lowest level possible to govern your group because i mean you know the feds don't they don't really govern us but they gave us all these suggestions the state passed all these rules and you are more than welcome to throw those into your arsenal of why you need to have a plan and the main state legislative action was uh texas labor code 412.054 and then we have, we chose that mandates that every state entity will have a plan and that that plan um, will meet whatever the guidance of SORM is. And then SORM opted rather than trying to go all legislative and us auditing you guys or anything, we wanted to make it a partnership and a much more organic, positive experience. So we came out with the two policy letters. There was the 2013 original policy letter and the 2019, and those are just the Texas continuity policy letters. So those can go into your authorities and references, but if you can get something that's signed by your own provost or chancellor or whatever um, the head person or persons are with enough, I won't say intimidation factor, but enough respect across your campus to say this needs to happen, you're gonna have your best response from your people jumping on board. Uh, UT Dallas also wants a copy of your letter, Justin, and and then we're losing Patrick. Uh, hope we'll see you again, Patrick, and I will post the uh, video of this, so if you want to catch on and see any of the other issues, please jump on that video and check it out. We'll see you next time, hopefully. All right, thank you. Sure. Um, all right, yes, and, and he said that Raymond Lorio has arranged to get the meeting. Raymond was the one trying to get in, and we've tried and tried with the Zoom, and something is just not letting him in, so I told him we'll send him the, the video as well. All right, um, how many of you are currently using drones on your campus? Not students playing with drones, but you guys actually using them as a part of campus business. The only thing that we use is um, for our GIS group. Uh, they're the only ones who use it. Okay. Um, so, and and you're really hard to hear, Angela. I don't know if the microphones are stopping you, but you said you're using them only for GIS purposes, correct? Okay. Thank you. Hey, Macy, I saw your name pop up. How, what do you have to contribute? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you pretty well. Oh, okay, good. Um, so, yes, we have a, all of our, nearly all of our schools have um, drone use regularly on their campuses. Um, and in addition to our system offices and our system campus, other like just the system campuses. So we have a drone 
policy um, with that sets the standard for those campuses to be able to regulate drone use, both you know recreational and that has to be approved by a um, supervising authority that is on each campus. Okay. Nice. And what for the ones that you're officially using as part of the campuses or system, what are you using them to do? Well, we have, I mean, it's a, it's a wide range. So um, we have anywhere from police activity, like public safety activity. We have construction companies. There's so much construction going on across our members that they do. Some of those contracts actually require like a weekly um, like site survey from a drone person, depending on how expensive the project is. So, um, and, and then down to hobbyists. And then we also have professors that, that teach classes on, on um, unmanned aircraft um, construction and research. It's, um, it, drones are our new normal now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. I'm sitting here thinking of, you know, old construction sites and the fact that, what, I wonder what they would have thought at the idea of weekly drone surveys. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, yeah, it is, um, I, I didn't, um, I have come into this reality that this has been part of my job function um, very reluctantly. This is not what I envisioned, but you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it seems to me technology is advancing so quickly now that there's virtually no way to, to stay on top of it or to realize what your job is going to be three years down the road. Um, so, so you use them now for, do you use them at all just on your existing buildings to do things like, um, check an initial storm, uh, inspectioner of your roofs or anything like that? Our, um, our partners in insurance. So if we have had a major disaster, we have, um, responders contracted and, um, if they have the appropriate um, COAs, then they are able to use it in a public safety capacity. The, um, the, the insurance partners, I believe, would still have to submit, like if they're just doing a damage assessment, let's say, um, they would still have to submit um, for um, approval from the campus, um, campus supervising authority. So okay. I don't know if our insurance partners have public safety COAs or not, if they could operate under that. Um, okay. Has any, so you said your police department uses them. When you have big events on your campus, you know, games or, you know, some sort of festival on the campus or whatever, do they use those at all for general crowd security or, you know, try and. No, no. Um, not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, our, the, the one campus that I'm thinking of that, that currently has and uses their drone, the, the police, they have been asked to do so for security checks for a large windmill uh, research project. Oh. That is, yeah, and this is out in West Texas. So um, I don't know of, I, I mean, it, they may do campus security at other, mem uh, for like games and stuff, but I don't, I'm not aware of it. Okay. I know that um, another way they're starting to try and get out there and look for you know, active shooter potentials. Yes, Monica. So I can speak to our main campus um, in College Station, and we do not use drones in our police department for any type of uh, large special events or game day security or anything like that. Um, we have used some software, anti-drone software, which is always a big discussion that we have um, with the athletic department and other um, law enforcement agencies within our conference about how do you secure from other people using drones and potentially weaponizing them during some type of large special event. Um, and so we have um, occasionally been able to demo some of those softwares and things, but unfortunately the question always becomes is who's going to pay for this type of stuff um, because the athletic department wants the police department to pay for it and the police department doesn't have money to you know spend on those type of systems to secure one stadium or something like that um, 
but again, we don't have access to them here for our public safety agencies. Um, our local jurisdictional partners, I know our local fire department has them and um, can use them for fires. And so if we had something on campus and we needed to bring a drone in and utilize it, we have other agencies um, that we have mutual aid agreements with that we could um, you know, partner with them to try to use the drones if incident command thought that it would be beneficial. But it's not something that we maintain here at the main campus. Okay. I did put a link to our policies that Macy was talking about as far as for anybody that wants to use drones, whether they're researchers or for recreational, recreational use on our campus, they do have to follow certain policies, which we do have um, online, and I put the link in the group chat. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, not only did Monica put a link there, but Justin added a link, and then Jonathan Soriano just added a link. Um, so you've got some inter some information on TAMU, on UNT, and then Jonathan's is a drone resource from the Air Space Museum, and it shows active registered drones and so on, so it's a way to track a little bit. So, um, you know, I, I'll be curious to see as this becomes, as, as Macy said, more and more the mainstream of business, what clever ways you guys find to utilize drones for the good and and also as monica said how you worry about um drones coming in at, with ill purpose um i feel like i'm talking about a space age film or something um if any of you have seen the latest of the the angel has fallen the latest of those they have a a van out of which they launch thousands of drones that all go and attack and it's it's crazy that it's getting to be about that way I went to a the Texas Police Chiefs Association conference earlier this year, and they had a presentation that um, Arlington Police Department has a phenomenal um, drone program. If if anybody is looking into peace use of drones, um, they have they have really expanded it. They're using it for like to find you know to find a you know somebody who runs from them and. Um, it has, they have a couple of documented cases where it's actually saved, saved their officers' lives because the drone was able to see where the person was hiding with a gun and would have shot the officer had the officer come around um, the corner and they didn't know he was there, so, or would have shot at them. I don't know if he was right. on the target. So, um, so anyways, if anybody is interested just in the police aspect, the Arlington Police Department um, did a presentation and I'm sure that they were really excited about it. I'm sure that they would offer um, any additional guidance. Great. Um, and that might be a good group if, or you know, they might be able to refer you to another group that does a good job, but if you want to bring somebody out to your area to talk either to your, your continuity and risk council or your senior management or your students or whatever to get that message across. Um, all right, so anything else on drones? I know that the military has a lot of uh, stuff on drones. In fact, uh, they have some uh, technology that they use to do counter uh, measures in case somebody has ill will with drones. Um, they also have many drones that they use for uh, in the field to just do short, short uh, range reconnaissance. Um, they use that in Afghanistan right now, and uh, they're only about one inch long, the drones and they actually just go about a mile long and they have a lot of policies about drones so if anybody wants to uh look on there the military has a lot of stuff about drone policies i i've done a lot of research on that and i'm continuing to do more research on it um uh, drones are are the future unfortunately and so i know, well, one, and, I mean, I know there's one a of lot my, of good too yeah <laughs> and i know one of my coworkers, you know, he has one too so i'm very interested in myself so uh We'll bring, we'll bring got some more stuff on that uh, later on, and we're going to get some more information, uh, especially on the drones, because like I said, there's a, that's where a lot of stuff is going now. Yeah, um, and at the State Office of Risk Management, we've even looked into the possibility, I don't think a decision's been made yet, but they're trying to weigh out the pros and cons of buying a couple of drones that when our risk managers come out to sites to do inspections, might allow them to get like onto a roof that's otherwise not safe to access um, and so on. Uh, so that might be able to help us with what we do on risk inspections. Um, I do know that the coworker that has the drone, I, I think it's probably the same coworker Frank's mm -hmm. talking about, 
uh, he's one of our communications and presentation type guys. So he's always, he's a professional photographer, but we have to be really careful with drones because we sit about a block off of the Capitol grounds and you don't fly a drone over the Capitol grounds without getting in a huge amount of trouble. So there are some regulations like that that you need to be aware of too. Um, <clears throat> All right, let's see. Are there any drones that can help out department help departments complete their coup plans? All right, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Wish. <laughs> um, I think, you know, you talk about somebody droning on and drudgery. I think that's how you, you can bring that into the coop conversation. <laughs> but if, if I come up with one, I will certainly let you know. Um, all right. So we had a couple of other things to talk about. Um, looking at satellite or remote campuses and continuity, how many of you are tying a satellite campus into your main plan? How many of you, the satellites have to have their own plan or perhaps Maybe you have one big satellite and one small satellite and you wrap up the little one, but the big one has its own. So let me touch a little bit more on that. We have a kind of a newer satellite campus um, just to the east of our main campus, uh, maybe 20, 25 miles or so. Frisco is, is, the, is the town name in Collin County. Um, but um, yeah, I'm working with them currently and and kind of in a debate, an internal debate to figure out, um, again, I mean, do I create kind of a more of a framework type plan? Because they do have about 10 different colleges or schools that provide uh, academic classes at those two satellite locations in Frisco. Um, so do I kind of wrap them into those, those college or school department level plans or um, provide more of a, again, a, a bit more of a framework plan for that campus uh, specifically and rely on, for instance, the College of Information continuity plan to account for those Frisco uh, classes. So that's kind of where I was coming from uh, with that topic and I'll shut up for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have some advice for Justin on that? Hey, Shelly, can you hear me? Barely, Kyle, but I can hear you. All right. What about now? That's great. Okay. Uh, this is Kyle Gunn from Texas Tech University System. Uh, what we did is we have a few uh, satellite campuses, and we viewed it from the aspect of if they had an event, uh, because we've got Abilene, Amarillo, these are all over 100 miles away, they would be the ones responding to that event. Um, so we, we looked at it as they need their own plan. Uh, some of their functions rolled up to the Lubbock main campus. Um, so they were tied in that way and they had their essential functions listed in that plan. But we, we wanted them to have their own plans at the satellite level. Just because if something happened, they would be the ones reacting, not somebody in Lubbock. So if that helps. Okay. So it might be that there's a the amount of space might make a big difference if they're over a certain distance away, you know, that it just helps to have their own or um, if there's a significant mission difference, like, you know, one of them is a pure science campus or something like that, that might also make a difference. Well, and also with their, they went out on their own and got alternate facilities in their area. Um, so it was good to have their own plan on that one because mm -hmm. they built it there. Uh, if we built, into the Lubbock plan, why do we have alternate facilities in Abilene? You can do that, but it's just easier if Abilene owns that plan. Right. Yeah, yeah that makes good. sense. And Kyle, yeah. that's helpful too, because again, the way we're branding this campus is those people on the eastern side of the Metroplex, right, they have access to uh, University of North Texas. Uh, operations, classes, whatever the case may be. So yeah, I think that would be wise to kind of develop it out on that campus level to make sure that they do have alternate facilities or backup plans in that general area, right? If, 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 if one of their buildings floods or, or is damaged or whatever the case may be, that they do have that, uh, that space there. So again, we're not putting out the people who register for Frisco classes having to drive, you know, 
45 minutes to an hour up to Denton to continue their education. So yeah, that totally makes sense. Anybody else want to weigh in on how they're handling their satellite campuses? Uh, this is Monica again. Sorry, I keep talking, but um, if uh, the way we handle it, it kind of just depends on the size of the campus and then um, really what their administration looks like. You know, if it's a truly established campus where they kind of have um, an organizational structure there um, with their, there's either a dean there or somebody else that's kind of separate from the main campus administration, then we see them as needing their own plan. So for example, we have a law school in Florida. I mean, not in Florida, sorry, in Fort Worth. Um, and so, um, you know, the law school in Fort Worth, they're completely separate. They have, you know, their own kind of organizational structure and decision making there. Yes, they're still tied into our administration, but not in the same way as let's say a small location that um, doesn't really have um, any of their own support services and things like that. Um, and so for the law school, they have their own plan and then they're almost treated like a college level plan. You know, they have a plan and then below them, some of their departments within the law school would have their own departmental level plans, if you will. Um, and so they still can reference or be part of our framework, but they have their own plan. And then if we have a smaller level, um, you know, satellite group that is considered a satellite campus, um, and they're just one college, then they can be wrapped up in their college level plan. Okay. If that makes sense. Yep. Makes sense to me. What else? Any, any other comments about satellite campuses? And Justin says, thanks. Um, so two more things I want to talk about, and they're both almost more administrative, but one is Justin's question on template sharing and did, would it make sense to form a Google group or I can investigate through SORM to see if there's something we could host on our website that you guys could all sign into or whatever, or you might have other programs you guys use for this sort of stuff where you guys could go on, check regularly, post questions, answer questions, post your docs. <laughs> Angela D says, yes, yeah, sharing is caring. Um, and Justin says yes too. So any suggestions on, does anybody working in a, a free program um, that already that has been really, really effective and good that you might wanna suggest for us to consider? Yes for Monica also. Justin says they use Microsoft Teams, not sure if it's accessible outside of their campus, hasn't tried. so. He could form a team, but he's not sure if he can put anybody but his campus people on the team is how I'm reading that. And Angela says, they've enjoyed using box.com, but not sure if it's free. Let me write that down. I can check into that. Um, I know I have a group that I maintain, um, Google Drive. I don't have a lot of experience with any of these. Um, does Shelly have a budget for us? Justin, I'm gonna put you in the same box I'm gonna put Jonathan in, and I'm gonna seal you both up and throw you in a closet somewhere. <laughs> um, but like I said, I've not ever had much need to share documents and so on. I did form a group of state coordinators for continuity with other states around the country, and we've been using Trello just to say, do you have ideas for what we're going to talk about our agenda? Do you have, you know, you can do some sharing on there. It seems very simplistic. I don't know. I haven't really run it through its paces to see what depth there is to that, but um, it's free. So, but it might even be possible, but I'm not going to promise anything because I'd have to take it through a whole different division of my agency that there might be some way for us to post something like that that would be maybe that you guys could all have logins or something so that everybody and their grandmother wasn't getting into your information but um, you know that that might be helpful so if you if you have other sharing software you think works well especially if you happen to know that it's free would a Google group be accessible I have no idea
Yeah, it, it's true. We can't always just try it out. So let me look a little bit into the box, the Google Drive, you know, Google Groups, Trello, those kinds of things, and see if I can get some more information. If any of you want to dig around and send in information, we'll compile it all, share it, maybe get some of you to test it between yourselves to see if it works. And then once we've tried a couple of them, if they're free, we can try as many as we want and test them out and then see about putting something more permanent in place. So that'd be a great way to share. Let's see, Justin, I'll keep you in the loop. Absolutely. Um, you can be one of my guinea pigs, Justin. So, <laughs> all right. The other thing I wanted to bring up just for me, um, you know, we, in July, we hosted our first remote continuity meeting and we, uh, Justin was our host there at University of North Texas. And, you know, it was, it was a real trial by fire. We, we tested our system to the, see if we could break it. And I was afraid we'd break it right before everything got started, but it actually went a little better than I expected. Um, so I want to definitely go out on the road a little more often. And it seems to me if we're going to try to get to different areas of the state, our mission would be twofold. One would be to host a regular continuity meeting that everybody can get to either remotely or in person. Two, to bring allow some people out in more remote areas who can't get in here for meetings ever to get to be live with us occasionally. And perhaps my biggest reason for doing that is I want to try to use regions of our state to introduce local business, local government to continuity, give them a little bit of information and let them know there's a resource out here for help so that perhaps every community gets stronger, which ultimately makes our state stronger. It seems to me the easiest <coughs> way to reach out and to find somebody who can host us and who has some knowledge of the business and the local government in the area would be to go through just the universities in each area. And I know some of you have already said, hey, if you want to come to our area, we could probably find a place to, to host you. What we would need for that would be an internet connection that we can hook into that's solid enough to run video. Um, if you have a sound system for people who are in the room, that would be great too. Although usually I can talk loudly enough to be heard most of the time, but, and then we would ask you guys or anybody that you knew that had things to pitch in and be participants and presenters and then invite Justin, you might want to chime in here, but Justin invited, I know his LEPC and he had a group of North or North Central Texas schools that included a lot of other universities and private sector schools might invite school districts in your area you might go to the Better Business Bureau and to help us figure out who would be good people to invite to your meeting to attend either in person or online and try and plant that seed how do you all feel about being my go-to for hosting hello can you hear me yes Oh, perfect. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of Monica, but we have um, all those things um, at the Brazos C EOC, and it might be a useful location since it's in the middle of uh, Dallas, Houston, and um, Austin, San Antonio. And so um, that invite is there if you need it. Sure. Great. That would be fantastic. Because if we put it at the EOC, you know, it's, I mean, it already feels like, man, people, it, weren't familiar with us that would come into that would say, oh, okay, this sounds like it's an important safety thing because of that. So that would be fantastic. And Monica said virtual tour of the EOC is available and she listed a site. I will go through that. I'm, I'm opening it now, but then closing my internet window so that I can keep an eye on this, <clears throat> but I will look at that. Um, and then Justin is a great opportunity to have experience of storm in the room local larger businesses like Peterbilt and so on. And Justin is going to continue to bring the continuity conversation into their LEPC meetings. He talked some about whether they wanted to form a separate team that would be a COOP team for their local area. That would certainly be a viable option because so many of the people are involved there. I think, Justin, did you decide you were gonna keep that as a portion of your LEPC in your um, multiple campus type meetings? Okay, so he's just gonna roll that up and try and make sure that those 
the LAPC and his group of schools keep talking coop in their other meetings rather than dragging everybody to another meeting. If you don't have a real strong group like that that you can do that with, then you could form a coop group and um, try and keep that energy going within that group. And just, uh, Jonathan, thank yeah, and you. Again, yes. Shelly, I think just to kind of tie into a little bit kind of why or how we decided, decided to start that conversation was uh, you know, a, a COOP event might not just affect your university, right? Or it may just affect your university. And then again, of course, you you might be relying on local school districts for space or, you know, local businesses for some assistance, you know, whether it be, you know, water or, or whatever the case may be, right? They may have space or some resources that you might be over. And of course, as I always say in the emergency management community, you don't want that emergency situation to be the first time that you meet somebody, I guess. So Absolutely. just kind of a... Uh, some, so a little bit more info and and why I've kind of included some of the local larger businesses uh, in our region as well a resource perspective um, and then of course just just to just to just to get out and uh, and meet people so yeah right yeah it is just one more great way to have conversations I I come out I came into Coop from the hazmat field and one of the things we had government funding to go teach public sector groups but we would oftentimes try and get the private sector groups to host a class and we'd end up combining them because if you have a, a group of firefighters or police who would report when a large food refrigeration facility is having a hazmat event with their ammonia refrigeration unit or something, there's always that posturing and that drawing the line in the sand and we don't need you or we can handle this or, oh my God, you got to take this off our hands. Uh, are you going to fine us? Whatever it might be. But when they have sat down in a class and they've screwed up together and they've laughed together and they've planned a little bit together, then when an event happens, it's like, hey, Bill, how's it going, Jim? Is it your refrigeration line you were talking about in class? Yeah. It just becomes a whole different atmosphere as well as knowing each other's stuff ahead of time. And I think this works a lot the same way. Kyle, I did also see your message that you guys could host, so I'll be in touch with you as well. And I don't think Ginger's on the call today, but um, I know Ginger was possibly interested to so that's helpful I'm gonna put it to my agency to say we have four quarterly meetings a year I don't know if this has to be a quarterly meeting in between we're gonna be doing all kinds of different training classes and we could really do it with any of those but if I could get out on the road at least twice a year I think that that would be helpful um, so I'll bring that up again and we'll talk more about that. Um, <laughs> Justin, please give him a reason to get out of Denton for a day or two. Well, apparently Jonathan's looking to have parties at the uh, EOC, so we may be able to hook you guys up on that. Um, <laughs> so, oh, he's on his way, Jonathan, look out. Um, but no, thank you guys for... Uh, your openness to that idea and for taking a lead role. I know in most communities, they look up to their universities, I think, because of they see it as so much planning is in place beyond what a lot of smaller communities have in, in most other places. So we will touch back to that. What else? We've got a few minutes left. If you guys have other things you'd like to bring up. All right, don't everybody trip over each other trying to get through the door. Um, just as a reminder, we do have our regular quarterly meeting coming up this afternoon from 1.30 to 3.30. We'll be back on Zoom for that. And um, so I hope that you guys will be able to join us. If you didn't get the invitation for that, let me know and I'll send you the Zoom invite for that. Um, and I will also send out a notification of the video of this. So if you know anybody that wanted to see it and couldn't get in or whatever, um, they'll be able to look at it. Justin also just said, did you send a link to the Zoom meeting for the regular quarterly meeting? It is, oh, it is also on our webpage. So if you go to sorm.state.tx.us, there's a black ribbon at the top, a menu ribbon that has continuity of operations. If you hover your area over that, it will have a drop-down menu, and the very top one is training and resources. 
if you click on that when and scroll about halfway down the page there's a, a box that says join our next meeting it gives you the date and time and right under that box it says to register for the zoom meeting click here so that will get you in so if like I said if you end up stuck my email address in case you don't have it from all the millions of emails I've been sending out it's just Shelly s h e l l e y dot crane c r a i n and I'll put it in the chat window too at sorm.texas.gov and you just send me an email and I will try to get you the link I just tried to spell my own name wrong so hang on and then I will also remind you of the link to get it off our website sorm What is state.tx.gov? Something's missing. Oh, Texas. Huh. I'll have to think about this. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. <laughs> I can't even get my own email name correct, and it's my the name I've lived with my whole life. So, um, so you now have my email address. You have the link to the SORM address. Even if you just look up SORM, um, it'll probably give you the option for the SORM address. And then just hover over continuity and take the first option. So if nobody else has anything they really want to talk about, I'm going to give you back a few minutes of your day, and we will hope to see you again at 1.30. Thank you guys so much for being here.